Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Victor right here. I just want to reach out to everybody and send my love and full. Hopefully, everybody's doing good, you know. Um, I just wanted to share some scriptures. But first, I want to share what I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came unto his own in Jerusalem, and they received him not. They found no cause of death in him. Still, they had him slain his own people. He who knew no sin was made sin for us, so that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. And the reason why they crucified him, right, was because they said that he made himself to be the son of God. That's why they killed him. And a lot of people like to reject the son of God, you know, and it's really sad. They they make the son of God to be something that he's not. He's the son of God. It's, it's so crazy because, you know, like a thousand years later, you know, he's still just trying to preach the son of God, that that's who he is. That's. Man, thank you, Jesus, man. Yeah, and after they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and they laid him in a sepulcher. But God rose him from the dead and he was seen alive by many witnesses after he resurrected. In 1 Corinthians 15, that's where our Apostle Paul declares the gospel to the church. It reads, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and where ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen as Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, and of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen in me also as if one born out of due time. So that was 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8, where our Apostle Paul declares the gospel to the church. He says in Galatians 1, 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that would trouble you would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we were an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed, as we said before. So say it now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than you have received, let him be accursed. So I don't care what other gospel these people claim it to be. That what I just gave to you, First Corinthians fifteen. That is where Apostle Paul declares the gospel to the church. So if they give you any other kind of gospel other than that, let him be accursed, as the Scripture says. You know. Um, I like to be obedient to the scripture unless I'm going to reprove and rebuke somebody on, you know, what they're trying to say the gospel is to be. And, you know, if they don't take the correction, then, you know, I just know they're a false teacher and they're, you know, they're, man, a child of the devil, man. I'm starting to think a lot of these people, they just deceive on purpose, man. You know, I'm really starting to think that. But, you know, and um, he says that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth... The Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed the gospel. For as I said, Lord, who have believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I just preach it to you guys. You know, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I preach the gospel. I pray you guys call upon the name of the Lord. Um, yeah, in 1 Thessalonians 4, right, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And Jesus Christ is Lord, and he is the Son of the Father. He is the Son of God. There's a lot of people who will try to, you know, make it seem like he's the Father but, you know, Jesus says in Mark 13, 32, right? He's talking about his coming right here. It says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, 
but the father. So if he was actually his father, that would be a major contradiction because he would have to know the time because the time because the father is the son, you know, and he would have to know the time. But Jesus says the son doesn't know the time. So, you know, I believe Jesus to be true because there is no guy found in his mouth. I had one guy try to tell me that God veiled his knowledge and they give you a whole bunch of like heresy and stuff like that. You know, they'll give you their own um, commentary on, you know, the scripture and stuff. But I let Jesus be true over every man. Um, you know, the scripture says, God forbid, yea, let God be true. And every man a liar as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And the whole book of John, in John 20, 31, right? John says right here, our apostle, he says, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And see, a lot of oneness people, they will go to John 1, 1, right? It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the word was God and then they'll go to 14 right and they'll say and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and that's where they stop at <clears throat> but when you continue to the rest of the verse right it is so clear who it's talking about it says and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so we know in John 1 the word was with God in the beginning right and then when you go to 1 John 1, it makes so much sense because, you know, he's the son of God. Watch, the scripture is so clear, you guys. It says, 1 John 1 reads, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word capitalized of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So, you know, um, it's very anti-Christ when, when, when these people, they deny the Father and the Son relationship, right? It's either you're going to make a distinction between the Father and the Son or the nature of God. God the father of him being a man, right? So, I mean, it's it, that's where you got to draw the line. You got to draw a line somewhere. If not, there's going to be contradictions. And, you know, it's just the spirit of the Antichrist, you guys. It's just so real, you know? And um, 1 John 22, 1 John 2, 22, it says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Look, he is Antichrist that denieth the father and the son, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same had not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son had the Father also. He continues to say, let that, therefore, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So, you know, the brethren let us know all through the scripture, man. You know, that there's going to be so many, you know, false teachers, all these liars, man. It's just getting worse and worse, man, you know. But it's all good, man. We're just trying to expose these dudes, man. And um, right here in first, uh, or John, John 17, 8, our Lord Jesus Christ says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou did send me. So you have to believe that the Father sent the Son, you guys. That's what Jesus said that the brethren believed his disciples, right? And then our apostle John says in 1 John 4, 14, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And this is who the brethren preached all through the scripture, you guys, was the Son of God. So all these people out here preaching another Jesus, another Jesus, you guys. And this is where the promise is at, as you see in the picture right here. And this is the record that God had given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So you must believe on the Son of God. 
in order to have everlasting life. You know, it's it's so simple. But in um first Corinthians, oh second Corinthians 119, it says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus. Was not yea in name, but in him was yea, right? So it says in the scripture by the, um, what does it say? Um, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, right? So that that was three, you know, brethren who all preached Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you guys. And you know, God is not the author of confusion. And you know, we see, um, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God, right? And this is when we know that the Ethiopian, open, the Ethiopian eunuch was a believer, right? Because in Acts 8.37, our apostle Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right? So, excuse me. <clears throat> so that was in Acts 8.37. Then we see when Jesus was walking among us still. That was after he was crucified. Um... Right here in Matthew 16, 15, Jesus, he saith unto him, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. He said flesh and blood had not revealed that unto him, but his father, which is in heaven. And amen. We see that in Galatians 1, 15 with our apostle Paul as well, where he says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Amen. And, you know, that's the whole reason why they, they killed him. Like I was saying, you know, earlier in John nineteen seven, the Jews answered him, we have a law and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. So that's the reason why they crucified him, you guys. You know, and that's why the people, the people, all these, you know, f false preachers and false teachers, while well, they try to have you to believe only on the Father is just so you don't have the son. Because when you have the son, you have everlasting life. When you don't have the son, you have not life. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, I mean... You know, these one is dudes and these modalists, man, they can believe on the father all they want. But according to the scripture, you know, they don't have this and, you know, they have the wrath of God abiding on them, you guys. So, you know, I'd be very careful with all these teachers because I'm going to be honest. I used to believe in that doctrine, you know, and I was deceived by it, you know, once upon a time, man. And that was when I didn't know the word of God like that, man, you know, and it's kind of crazy because... These dudes weren't even really oneness and stuff. They just believe that the name of the father and stuff like that. But they don't even believe that the son is the father. But that's what they preach. But, you know, it's just kind of weird. You know, there's just a bunch of weird and false preachers, false teachers out there, you know. And earlier, um, I was talking about the whole um, pre-trib, post-trib doctrine, right? And this is one of their scriptures, you guys. Look at this. Pay attention to this. You know, you guys don't have to believe me, you guys. You know, I'm not even tripping, man. But, you know, in 1 Thessalonians, I like 414. I like to start right there. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him, right? And then this is like the pre-trip doctrine that goes down, you guys. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord... That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, right? So, I mean, verse 15, it clearly says the coming of the Lord, you guys. You know, and I used to be deceived by that, too, and man. It's just, you know, that's why I was trying to find people to talk about that doctrine. You know, that way they could, you know, give me some solid scripture. I mean, 
And this is another one, um, 1 Corinthians 15, right? This is another one, but I mean, the scripture is so clear on what it says. Look at this. It says, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, right? I mean, the scripture clearly says at the last trump, you guys, you know, but, you know, I only say this, you guys, because, you know, it's all out of love, and, you know, I used to be deceived by these doctrines, and until I really started letting God be true, and, you know, I really started looking at it like, what? Hold on, you know, and, and the first Thessalonians 4, right? It says the coming of the Lord, right? Watch, I'm going to read it one more time, and then I'm going to go to Matthew 24, and let's compare it with Matthew 24, you guys. And the whole thing is um, the wrath of God and the wrath of sin are both separate, you guys. It's not the same thing, you know, but a lot of people be like, oh, you know, we're not in wrath God, in God's wrath. But, I mean, it's two separate things. I mean, but a lot of people... You know, they'll be like, oh, you know that they won't let that happen to the church. But I mean, have you read the letters? What happened to Paul and the brethren? You know, but, you know, I just think it's kind of like an ear tickling doctrine. But if somebody were to give me some solid scriptures on to support it, but the scriptures that I see from it, you guys, I'm just going to let you be honest. Like, I'm going I'm to be honest. Like, man, look at First Thessalonians 4.15. It said, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive. And remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Right? So a lot of people will be like, okay, oh man, look, his feet don't touch the ground right there and this and that, right? And when you compare these same events to Matthew 24, you guys, his feet don't even touch the ground right there as well. Look at this. Immediately after the trib after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven. With great, with power, with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Remember, it, it just says that in First Thessalonians four, you guys, it sound it's the same exact thing. You guys, there's only one coming. I mean, they try to make it seem like a half coming, and then the coming and stuff, you guys. And I used to believe it, but you know, when I really look at the scripture, look at, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall. Gathered together as elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So this happened after the tribulation, right? How you seen the Son of Man appear, and the grace, and the and the sound of a trumpet, right? All those same things are happening right here. Look at, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and shall remain. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I mean, if you guys don't see how it's the, it's talking about the same thing. And if you look up the coming of the Lord, right, in First Thessalonians, anywhere, you, you, if you have a um, King James Bible app and you could do like a word search on it, go to the book of um, First Thessalonians, and then type and then look for the word, the coming, and then only for First Thessalonians. And First uh, Thessalonians two nineteen, it says, "For what is our hope, hope or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are ye are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming?" First Thessalonians three thirteen it says, "To the end He may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all His saints." First Thessalonians four fifteen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So that was that verse right there. It says the coming. First Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
And there's this other one too, you guys. Is um, let me go to it. Second Thessalonians one. We'll start right here, you guys. It says, "Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, talking about the coming again, and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shooken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand." Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? So all these things must happen first, you know? I mean, Jesus talks about it in 24, let no man deceive you, you know, all these things are going to happen. And it says, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is Worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And see, look at here's another um pre trip verses right here, you guys. It's verse six is and verse six and seven, right? And the whole time you don't during this what we just read, it does not talk about the um the church, and you know we know the bride is considered her. You know, and I'm still waiting for somebody to show me that this is really the church because you have to have precepts. The scripture says precept upon precept, line upon line. I hear a little there to, to, you know, who shall know doctrine. And that's how you give it, you guys. And I got one verse that somebody gave me that I'm going to go to it right now that shows that it's Michael, the archangel. And I'm going to read that. So it says right here, remember you now when I was with you. I told you these things, and now ye you know what we told it that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out the way. So right here, they don't have. I've, I haven't seen a free tribber um, give a verse to it to support that where it's the church or anything like that. And they're like, oh, God's taken out the way and this and that, right? But you know, they still haven't showed proof. Let's see if it's in. Daniel, it's in, it's gonna, oh, right here, so you know, he's, um, there's something holding it back, right, from happening, and Daniel 10, it says, 21, but I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince, right, so, I mean, it could be, I mean, there's scripture right there, you know, somebody gave me a scripture that shows that that could be who's withholding it. But And then, so I'm going to keep reading. And it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right? And um, this is what I've really been searching on, too, you guys. is Matthew 24, right? I was talking to some guy earlier about this today, but... I didn't really believe what he was saying because, okay, so look at this verse, you guys, because I believe that the, I'm starting to see because we know that there's going to be, um, there's going to be two beasts, right? There's two beasts inside of Revelation. There's two beasts. I forgot if it's in um, Revelations 12 or 13, right? And there's one that comes out of the sand, you guys. And I think that one might be the son of perdition. <clears throat> And then they and then they make an image for him, right? And then Satan gives him life as well. So another image gives life, you know. But um, right here, when, where it talks about um, immediately after the tribulation, look at look at all these different events that are going on right here, you guys. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, right? <clears throat> so when you go to Revelation 13, Revelation, is it 13? It's 12, you guys heard about that. It says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Look at this. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. 
and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So we see right here that the stars come down from heaven, you guys, just like as we see in um, Revelation, I mean, Matthew 24, excuse me. And then and then you keep going down and it talks about um, and then we see Michael, the archangel again. Look at, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So remember how I was talking about how, you know, the stars came down from heaven, you guys, immediately after the tribulation. So, I mean, I'm seeing that <clears throat> going on right there as well, you guys, when you really put all this stuff together. I mean, the scripture pretty much speaks for itself. And also, you guys, I mean, there's a good timeline of um, Revelation 6, you guys. It talks about all the seals and all the things that are happening, right? So the whole thing is like the fifth and the sixth seal, you guys, are are like the ones, man. Look at right here. And, I, and Revelation 6, I'll start at 10. And they cried with a loud voice. Saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. It was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black. As sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So you remember what I was sharing in Matthew 24, how all these events happened. So this is like the fifth and the sixth seal, you guys. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men... And the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. So remember how in, Reve in Matthew 24 it talks about how they are going to mourn. And this is what's going on. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the, from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? So then... Comes the wrath of God after all these events, you guys. But, yeah, you know, I mean, I hope it made some pretty good sense, you guys. You know, all these things that happened. Because at first, um, we see how there, it's going to be false Christ and they're going to be showing wonders and all these things, right? So that's why I think that the first one might be the, um, the son of perdition. And then... Later on, when Satan gets cast down to the earth, how the wicked is going to be revealed as well. And that happens after the tribulation. It talks about how, you know, the moon gets darkened and the stars fall from heaven. And um, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. So after all those events, then he's going to come, you guys, the coming of the Lord. You know, I thank God. <laughs> You know, no matter what, man, I'm not even tripping on it, but, you know, um, in, what is it, Second Thessalonians, when we go back to it, you guys, Second Thessalonians, um, I'll keep reading, it says, even him who's coming is after the working of sin, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved, for this cause... God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So these are non-believers, you guys, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And then our apostle Paul goes on and says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, and beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, excuse me, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word 
or our pistol, now our Lord Jesus Christ and God, even our Father, which had loved us and had given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and word. And I know a lot of people like to um, say that, oh, you know, it's only going to be for Israel or he was only talking to Israel, right? And Matthew 24, you guys, and he's talking about the coming also in Mark 13, you guys. And at the end when he's talking, right, he says in Mark 13, 37, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So, I mean, he made it pretty clear that he was talking to everybody, you guys, and but in Revelation 7, you guys, I mean, they a lot of people be like, oh, you know, it was only for Israel, right? <clears throat> and in Revelation 7, you guys, we see how um, the 144,000 were all the tribes of Israel, right? And then you go down some more and it says in Revelation 7, 9, and after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds. And people in tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and in palms in their hands. So these are this is a number no man can number. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders. And the four beasts had fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. So these people are in heaven. Look at saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in, in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. Amen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. I can't wait for that day, you guys. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But yeah, you know, these are just some scriptures you guys can go and look over, man. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to be deceived by any more man-made doctrines, man. I suggest you guys study them all out. You know, but it says, you know, study the shoe they self approved unto God a work, man, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you guys. So I pray you guys, you know, believe on the gospel, you know, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the son of God. He came unto his own in Jerusalem and they received him not. They found no cause of death in him and they had him slain because he, they said he made himself to be the son of God and who, and who he is. He's the son of God, you guys. And, you know, after they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and they laid him in a sepulcher. So just like as the prophet Jonah was in the well's belly for three days and for three nights, it says, so shall the son of man also be in the heart of the earth for three days and for three nights. And on the third day, God rose his son from the grave and he was seen after he resurrected by over 500 brethren. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 1 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Hope you guys have a good night, man. I send my love. My door is always open if anybody ever wants to talk or anything. God bless you guys.